Welcome back to So This Is Thailand and Expert Advice. Now today we're talking about something that I know dreads a lot of entrepreneurs out there, that of the dreaded business proposal, um, business plan actually. Mm. But to help us today, we have our expert, Mr. BJ Radomsky, who is the founder of Big Picture Inc. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you. Now I know from, actually from personal experience, and I know that Tara here also has the dreaded experience of the business plan. We hear it's absolutely necessary, but when we look at it, we're like, oh, 50 pages, 100 pages of mm. what? How important is it? Well, that's, you're, you're, you're uh, not alone in that feeling. In fact, I have clients coming to me saying that, um, you know, I've written business plans when I did my MBA. Do I really have to do another one now that I'm starting a business? Missing the point. But the business plan hasn't changed for about 100 years, and it only works for about 25% of the population. Those people who are highly analytical, people who are really compliant to rules, they love the idea of getting in and writing a business plan. But for the rest of us, um, it's not an enjoyable process. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've broken this down into, um, I call it a jigsaw, and there are nine key pieces. And what it allows you to do at a, at a glance is just to be able to look at your business, your customers, and how the numbers would work on a single piece of paper. So it, it doesn't need to be a 50-page document. Well, if you're... You're going to go for some <laughs> fundraising after that. It's, uh, it's incredibly important. And, and I would encourage you to expand it into a further document, but it's a wonderful place to start. It's much more than just the sketch on the back of the napkin mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of people do when they're having an idea. It's a little more form and a little more structure to that. So for people who have a fear of writing business plans, what are the absolutely essential things that you must include okay. in one of those? Well, the, most, uh, the essential thing is you have to be providing some sort of service. So identifying what is the problem that your solution is going to help people through. And what a lot of people miss in, 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 in the problem is finding that, it's almost the emotional aspect of it. What is it that's really going to motivate your customer to want to come to you? So if I look at someone who wants to write a business plan, what they're looking at is um, there's, there's, there's fear, there's overwhelm, there's a number of things that are getting in the way of them picking up the pen to even get started. So mm -hmm. first, identifying what is that service exactly that you're going to be offering. So what you're actually doing is you're, you're taking what could be a very large, large concept, rather broad, let's say building a better mousetrap, and really kind of solidifying it and coming in concrete terms. What exactly are you going to do and what's the benefit to the customer? Yeah, that's the, that's the starting point. And once we have that done, what's the, one of the most important elements is determining what that strategy is going to be. Is yours going to be the best mouse trap at the best price? Is it going to be a, a very exclusive mouse trap? What is the strategy of then getting your mouse trap to market? Okay, once you've identified all of these things, um, I'm sure this happens to a lot of people. My next question is going to be, um, how important is it that you stick to the business plan? <laughs> well, if, <clears throat> you know, and, and laughing, but seriously, if uh, nothing changes, then yes, you stick to your business plan. But the plan is really just a path for you to start on. The fact that there's going to be a number of changes maybe in the economy from competition, or new products that are coming out, you have to have a certain amount of flexibility. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that plan as a, as a grounding device, as a starting point, however, you can find to be pulled too far from your plan. So I know you mentioned earlier that sometimes sticking to a plan wasn't what you always did. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. Does, does this mean that, let's say, as the market changes or even as your business develops, that you should be going and looking back at your business plan and updating it? Or is it something that is just an initial thing you do, and once you're up and running, you can put it back into the uh, closet? Well, I think the uh, business landscape is littered with companies that had achieved some tremendous success and then failed to review their plan and see what was happening with their strategy. And we've seen it you know, in the last couple of years with a few big name electronic and communication companies that have certainly stumbled. So no, it is something that we need to review on a, on a regular basis. And last but not least, we've been talking about all the benefits, but we haven't talked about where can you find this kind of information? Where can you find the help? Let's say I'm just out of my, out of my, my, my league here. Yes. I didn't go to business school, never wrote that 100 page business plan. Where do I start? Who do I talk to? Well, then this would be your lucky day. Because what you would do <laughs> is you would come to my website, and this process that I'm talking about, it's something I give away free. So in an initial offering, I will escort 
anyone who's interested in starting a business through this. Uh, business is important to me. It's something I have a passion for, and I love to be able to start, uh, help people get started in their business careers. Well, thank you very much, BJ, for joining us today. And hopefully everyone watching it there has a little more uh, oomph there, a little more courage to go ahead, follow your dreams. BJ will help you with at least getting you there, steering you in the right direction. And uh, we're definitely going to have you back on the show because I know there's going to be lots of more questions coming up. Great. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. So don't go away because we have a lot more coming on So This Is Thailand. And another exciting day here in Pattaya and another location that's great for the fun of family of all ages. You can see from the shark behind me, yep, we've come to Underwater World where you can see up close all the wonders that are found under the ocean. but from the safety behind some very thick glass. Let's go inside. Only a stone's throw away from Jom Tien Beach, you'll discover Underwater World Pattaya. It's the only marine museum in the area. 105 meters of acrylic tunnels transport you to a world beneath the waves to view the ocean as its inhabitants do. I know a lot of people who come to Pattaya don't know that they actually have an underwater aquarium here. How long has it been open? Uh, just five years ago. Five years already. I'd probably very popular as well. I know a lot of things that, well, a lot of fish in here. How many different species do you have? Uh, maybe 500 species. 500 species, wow. And is there any really special one that you have here? Uh, Oh, the ro a ronin shark? Yes, ronin shark. Actually, ronin is a ray. Oh, it's a type of ray. Yes. Now, why is the ronin ray so special? Uh, because it's an endangered species. Uh, endangered species, so that means it's really a, a rare opportunity to see a very unique fish. Now, in the facility, how many different areas do you have? Uh, we have three zones oh, in three this zones. area. Uh, the first zone is coral reef zone, uh, second zone is uh, for sharks and rays, mm. and then uh, the, another zone, uh -huh, we have a lot of fish from Thailand. Oh, like a freshwater fish from the river and lake. Here we're in another tank, zone one, as you mentioned, being the reef. Uh, what types of fish will we find in here? Uh, just as longfin, cooper, and uh, butterfly. Ah, so a lot of the fish we only see at the surface. Besides touring the tunnels and viewing fish of every shape and size, Many exhibitions increase your knowledge of this fragile ecosystem. Normally imposing sharks look fragile when seen in their infancy as they develop within translucent egg sacs for weeks before emerging. Well, no trip through the underwater world here would be complete without actually getting to handle and touch on these underwater creatures, but have to keep in mind the water is their natural habitat, so we have to make sure that they always stay in the water and handle them very carefully. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our tour. There's a lot to see here. Underwater world in Pattaya, just another great activity while you're enjoying your vacation. That's all for today, though. We'll see you next time back to the studio.